Today's star profile is on a young man of God who has used his talent to put a smile on everybody's face. That man is a playwright and a comedian. And of course, he is a husband to somebody very beautiful somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, just enjoy our Ken Chimuri. Of course, Pablo, enjoy. <laughs> uh, my name is Kenneth Chimuli. My friends call me Pablo, that is my stage name. And uh, I'm a journalist by profession and uh, a stand-up comedian by occupation. I also double as the humorist of uh, the tri-weekly uh, Observer newspaper. And uh, I'm also the, actually I used to be the productions director of Rock Point 256, uh, which is resuming again. Uh, it's a radio drama recorded in five languages and aired on 22 local radio stations. I'm a playwright as well, uh, a couple of plays that I've written that have been performed at the National Theatre. And uh, I'm a husband and a father. I gave my life to Christ in 2003. Now, unlike most of the people who say uh, somebody preached to me, or after preacher making you realize that, hey, you're the most wanted, come and give your life to Christ. I gave my life to Christ on, uh, on TV at 2 a.m. It was a Joyce Buyer program. And uh, that was the time when the first ever Big Brother had happened. And uh, uh, I was, and I'm still am, a big fan of uh, uh, Juko Gaetano Kagwa. And I was convinced beyond the shadow of doubt that he is winning this money, definitely. But uh, unfortunately, <laughs> He lost successfully and I was very bitter. So I decided to hit the bar with friends. We said, all right, we've lost it. We can't lose both. We can't lose uh, the war and lose the beer. So we went and drank and, uh, but I realized that guys were getting high. They were at a different wavelength than I. I wasn't, they were far ahead of me. And uh, we, we shifted best. We went to a place called The Deep in Tinder. It was a, a bar which is no longer there and we had one two three bottles coming to midnight past midnight but i went home and i was still sober and defeated my understanding so i was suffering from what to do and i switched on the tv and guess what there was joyce meyer preaching and, and talking about um, uh, serving the world and they're saying uh, for how long will you uh, serve the world uh, the world will praise you but uh, when will you praise the creator and so I said, okay, I think this message is meant for me. And uh, we said a short prayer. She says always oh, that short prayer, and uh, I shared the prayer. The next morning, it was a Sunday, and so I decided to go to church, uh, Watoto, uh, Watoto Church, and they were talking about uh, discipleship classes, and uh, uh, which led to baptism and things like that. So I said, okay, maybe this is the time. And uh, I went to the Bible, I went to the discipleship classes, got to learn what they were doing, then uh, went to the uh, evangelism, ex evangelism explosion class, and uh, yeah, that's how ever since I've never looked back. So uh, it's just all about recommitting my life to Christ. Every time it's uh, uh, my anniversary to me, people celebrate birthday, celebrate uh, marriage anniversary, but for me, the 8th of 8th September has always been a big anniversary for me. To me, that's the best anniversary when I'm committing my life, recommitting my life to Christ. I always believe that you should always go out to the world. That's, that's why it's called reach out. So I've used drama, drama as a reach out tool to preach to those who don't know about Christ. And uh, what we have done, we, as part, uh, I, I subscribe to the Watoto drama team of which I've been part of for the last nine years. And uh, we have had productions at the National Theatre, uh, plays at the National Theatre, which, um, which appeal to the people out there, uh, yet they have a Christian touch, a Christian message. Now, the kind of message we minister in our, in our drama are addressing our everyday challenges and uh, the difficulties people go through to maneuver them. And uh, for the, I've, I, I should say I've written three plays. The first one was uh, uh, One Night Stand. One Night Stand, I, it was in 2007. And in 2000 and, um, 
2009, I wrote a play called uh, uh, Madness is Coming. Madness is Coming. And this was a play about uh, where people are, uh, people are accused falsely for things they haven't done. And the play, the setting was in a cell where there's this lady who uh, killed the co-wife. And it was out of, uh, it's called uh, passion, the crimes of passion. And we're trying to see at what point can you justify a, a crime of passion. And then we also wanted to look at the irony of whereby you're going to be uh, uh, gallotined or you're going to be hung and then there's a priest to pray for you. So why, why we wanted to find out what goes through the mind of a person who's about to die and what are the things they are saying and what are the questions in their mind because they know that they are innocent. And that was a play that was addressing the challenges of, of when you're at the crossroad of death. And um, last year, that, uh, that was in 2012, I wrote a play called Kiss No More. And uh, Kiss No More was entirely, it was more or less like political satire, but with, with an icing of, uh, of Christianity in it. And we're looking at this politician who has everything. He's called Kisitu. That's why he was called Kiss, Kiss No More. His, his downfall from, from grace to grass. And we are looking at what are the challenges he's going through. He has a, a wife who's, uh, uh, who's feared in hell, expected in heaven. Yet he, he is dating the niece to the wife and then make, gets her pregnant. So we want to see where does, does this woman forgive the niece for carrying the husband's baby. And uh, wanted to see at what point do you seize, you are putting the Christian faith to test and seeing at what point are you justified to get angry. Because we believe that every hum human being has a justified degree of anger. And how do you control it? So those are some of the things we try to highlight uh, in the Watoto drama team. It's not the kind of uh, plays uh, where you'll find us talking about the plight of Joseph in the Bible. I mean, that's a story everybody knows. So we look at everyday things that happen. And I've, uh, I also write I also write um, stories for young children about uh, Christ, the drama plays. As a writer, uh, there are several challenges that you'll find in, uh, in a drama. Uh, I think the first one is drawing, there's a fine line between fame and shame. Uh, there's writing what you don't believe in, yeah, and, and, and you you're, you're compelled to write just because you've been commissioned to do it and you don't believe in it. And yet, uh, there's, a, there's a time I remember I was commissioned to write, uh, uh, they wanted me to write uh, a, a drama for something I didn't believe in. Yeah, it was something I didn't believe in. And I said, okay, Pablo, it's between making money to bring bread on your table and your faith, which are you putting first? Yeah, so as, as a writer, there are challenges between drawing yourself from your work. Your faith at times will antagonize with, with your work. And uh, the other challenge I've met is in, especially in the business of drama uh, uh, out there in the world. If you don't understand a certain language, they don't. Some people don't understand the language of honesty. So you'll find that there's a lot of uh, uh, unscrupulous people there who want to uh, teach you a language that you don't believe in. If you understand what I'm saying, the language of uh, uh, "Where's my soda? Where's my tea? I wonder why <laughs> they're all tattoo tellers." And that's where there's a challenge. And um, also, at times, writing for an audience you don't know. Yeah, writing for an audience that you feel you don't understand very well is one of the biggest challenges for a writer. So at times, you end up uh, perceiving a certain kind of audience and you write for them. One, I put my conscience first. Yeah. I, I make sure that, do I believe in what I'm writing? Can I defend 
what I'm writing. And at the end of the day, we need to achieve my ultimate goal. And, and, and that's, where, that's what I consider first. And with, with all honesty, I make sure that is it, I, I'm, I'm just like a Rotarian, you know, is it the truth? Will it build uh, goodwill and better friendship at the end of the day? Yeah, and then is it beneficial to all concerned? Those who are watching it, do they benefit from it? So I, I use the four way test as a way to overcome uh, those challenges. My, my advice to the up and coming artists and theater practitioners or those who are involved in ministry, uh, like the word itself, ministry is doing it for God. You can't put a price to ministry. So if you're going to enter, uh, ministry expecting money, you'll successfully fail because um, ministry is serving God. Outreach, you're reaching out to the people. To me, it's more or less like a tithe. You're giving your time back to God. And then also, it also involves uh, discipline because in ministry, you are, you, you are answerable to a pastoral team or a form of leadership or people that you're answerable to, you, the, the Lord's anointed. And so it needs a certain level of, of discipline and, and, uh, and understanding. And then when it comes to compromise, uh, you shouldn't always avoid uh, compromise because compromise affects quality. Yeah, and, and quality affects excellence. So I, I would tell them to, I would encourage them to look up to excellence. Let them give their best. Let them give their best. And what I mean by their best, I'm not saying that they should do it like other people do it. Just do what you can do best. Because in this world, there's always one you. And it's only you who can do what you can do. Nobody else can do it. There's a one Jesus, one Abraham, one Joseph, one God. <laughs> I mean, one me and there's one you, so just be yourself and if you can't m meet their expectations, their expectations are not your business, it's your expectations, where, how far can I go?